Big, big thanks to FreshBooks, the super easy to use cloud accounting software. FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial to our listeners. To claim it, just go to freshbooks.com slash invest and enter invest like a boss in the how did you hear about us section. Welcome to the Invest Like a Boss podcast. I'm Sam Marks. And I'm Johnny FD. We're self-made entrepreneurs who invest our own money and use modern technology to invest like a boss. Join us each week for exclusive interviews with our network of modern investors, business owners, and multimillionaires to discover new ways to invest our hard-earned cash. Hey guys, this is Johnny and welcome to episode 66 of Invest Like a Boss. Here's Sam Marks. Johnny, guys, welcome back. Great episode. Looking forward to doing this one, Johnny. How are you? I'm good, and I'm really, really excited for this. I'm a big fan of Shark Tank, and I'm a big fan of investing, and I think I'm going to be a big fan of Meet the Jabers. Aha. Well, we have on Sarika Batra, who's the producer and director of this upcoming show. It's going to be airing in a couple of months, and as Johnny said, it's called Meet the Drapers, and man... This is, I think this show is going to be a home run. Like when I first heard about it, Johnny, I was like, this makes total sense. Like this is, this is going to kill it. And it's only because of the advent of crowdfunding for equity and, you know, well, of course TV, but it, this, this couldn't happen without crowdfunding for equity. So I think it's going to be a home run. Yeah, definitely. So a very kind of brief intro on what the show is about. We're going to have three, you know, top, like just huge name venture capitalists. That are going to be basically the, I don't want to say the sharks. I don't want to keep comparing it to Shark Tank, but they're, basically mm-hmm. they're the shark, the sharks. And instead of people pitching home, like home type businesses or products on there, it's going to be startups that are going to pitch uh, these big VCs. And instead of us just being able to watch it on the sidelines and rooting, you know, and root for our favorite person, we can actually be the investors this time around. Yeah, it's it's super cool. I almost thought of it like. The Shark Tank meets the Home Shopping Network. So instead of just tuning in, you can actually, as an everyday investor, invest in these companies as they're pitching. So they're going to have a live crowdfunding campaign. When it airs, you're going to be able to go on, log on, and invest in these companies. And you might just so happen to be investing alongside of the Drapers. And as Johnny said, very prominent VCs, big VC families, three generations of VCs, in Silicon Valley. So you can be investing right alongside of these guys. I think it's it's such a cool concept for a show. Yeah, definitely. So if you guys somehow have been hiding under a rock, uh, the Drapers are Bill Draper, Tim Draper, and Jesse Draper. Right. And then the, we're going to get more into the episode format, but there'll be a fourth VC and guest host on each show. So it'll be the three Drapers plus the guest host. And I think, you know, this show is going to have broad appeal. This show and this episode and the episode, you know, people that are interested in investing and participating is going to have a lot to talk about in this. We're also going to get an inside look from Sarika as what it's like to be a producer on the show. And of course, in our network and our listeners, there's a lot of startups. There's an, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of hustlers. You might just be interested in pitching to get on the show. And we're going to talk about that and the deadlines for applying for this. Yeah, I really think this episode is going to have a little bit of something for everybody, uh, for people who are just interested in like, kind of like the format and the behind the scenes of the show, how something like this gets put together, and actually how how it all works. And there's going to be a lot of people who are just going to be interested in seeing what the Drapers invest in, uh, or like the kind of type of questions they ask, and what it's like being in the boardroom while they're getting pitched. And if you guys aren't familiar with Jesse Tim and, and Bill. Bill is the the grand basically the, the the grandfather, and he's been around you know um, in the VC world since the early days of like things like op- Open Table and Apollo Computers and things like that. Uh, mm. Jesse, the youngest, uh, she is kind of the the new um, new con- generation, the new generation, the c- consumer technology. She's really big in investing in female founded companies. Uh, and then we have Tim Draper, who is super famous for a lot of big companies like Twitch, Tesla, Skype. Uh, and he actually is one of the world's largest investors in Bitcoin, which I think he bought <laughs> 30,000 Bitcoin back in, I don't know, uh, a few years ago when it was, when it was still under a thousand dollars a coin. And now wow. I just calculated his, his worth of Bitcoin and he's holding, to, to today's um, 
price, he's holding a billion dollars with the Bitcoin. Oh, oh, man. I mean, awesome on his part, because that seems like something that the daughter would have been, you know, it, it would be more tuned into. So it's cool to see. I wouldn't say he's the older generation, but he's more of a traditional VC getting into Bitcoin while it was early on. Yeah. And, and that's really, really exciting. So I'm, I'm excited uh, to hear how she even got these guys to to uh, to agree to make a show how, like how mm-hmm. like how does like all happen because I would love to be able to kind of get the ins- inside um, scoop with big VC guys like this and create a show which I think is going to be I think it's going to be the next Shark Tank. This is going to be this is going to be awesome. I got a ton of questions. I can't wait to get started. All right, well let's take a listen. Hey bosses, if you are self-employed like we are, and especially if you hate dealing with numbers, invoices, and reminders, you need to check out FreshBooks. They made my life so much easier by letting me set up reoccurring expenses and invoices that I can set up once and just forget about. You can set up automated late payment reminders as well. So next time somebody who owes you money doesn't pay, they automatically get a message so you don't have to chase them down or worst off, forget to get paid. Seriously, if you're a small business owner or a freelancer, check out this service. It's super easy to use, and it's free for the first month. FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial to our listeners. To claim it, just go to freshbooks.com slash invest and enter invest like a boss in the how did he hear about us section. Everybody, welcome back. Sarika, welcome to the show. So nice to have you on and can't wait for this episode. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me on. Well, I'm really excited that Chuck from Republic.co put us in touch, told us some of the exciting things that are coming out with Meet the Drakers and what you're doing as the producer. And yeah, let's just kick it off. I'm really pumped to, to hear about you know your story as the producer and what excites you about the show. And I know all the listeners are really excited to hear about the format of the show, what they can view and how they can, how they can invest potentially alongside of uh, these big VCs. Yeah, absolutely. So essentially the show, the format of the show is interesting because people always compare it to Shark Tank, but it's really different because it's, it has a casual family feel. I mean, when you see Jesse and Bill and Tim interact, I mean, they're an actual family. So they're little nuances. They're funny with one another. They have great chemistry. You know, Jesse rolls her eyes at her dad and her grandfather and is like, you guys don't know what you're talking about, (laughs) you know? (laughs) And, um, so it's a lot of fun. So it's almost like stepping into the living room of the Drapers. Like you walk in, you're in their home. It's a real fun, casual conversation. And then after that, the entrepreneurs are asked a series of questions from the VCs. And the viewers are just peering in, like they're peering into a real Silicon Valley VC meeting. And they get to get a, their perspective, the VC perspective. But the twist is the VCs may or may not fund the entrepreneurs, but the power is in the hand of the viewers. Mm. So they can decide who they want to invest in and which one of these entrepreneurs is going to succeed. And the future of our the next gen of our companies, essentially. The power is in the hands of the people now. That's right. I love it. Well, can you tell us a little bit about the Drapers. I mean, I know a lot of people in the VC business, especially in Silicon Valley, these guys are huge. They're like blue chip VCs. But for everyone out there that is not familiar with the fan, family and their background, can you give us a little bit of the history as them, of them in finance? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, the Drapers are, um, have been in venture capital for generations in Silicon Valley. I mean, Bill Draper, Tim's grandfather, started his career in 1962. He started Draper & Johnson Investment, and um, he was one of the founding investors for companies like Hotmail, Skype, OpenTable, Apollo Computer, which was then acquired by HP, and the list goes on and on. And he, in fact, was one of the first venture capitalists in India. And then his family then just took on from there, Bill Draper, his son. I mean, many people have heard of him. I'm sorry, Tim Draper. Mm -hmm. Many people have heard of Tim. He's kind of a little bit of a celebrity with his personality. But he was a founding investor in, again, Tesla Motors, Skype, which we're using now, um, Parenting Magazine, um, Upside Publishing, Hotmail. So a lot of these big names that we've heard of. So essentially... 
people really look to the Drapers as like, what are they investing in? Where are they putting their money? Because it's usually the next big bet. And now Jesse Draper, their daughter, she really brought in a new perspective to the Draper family because she's supportive of women. She loves women entrepreneurs. So she's that new modern venture capitalist that goes after the companies that are not traditionally funded. Um, she's also a great media personality. Um, she had her own TV show called The Valley Girl Show, where she interviewed some of the greatest minds in business and entertainment, which is nice for us on the Meet the Drapers show because she really carries the show with that personality. So essentially, those are the Drapers. So you mentioned Bill Draper is one of the first VCs in India. Is he of Indian heritage or did he just end up there, you know, following business? Yeah, he just likes India. He followed business there and um, he he started venture capital there. Before him, they hadn't even heard of this, you know, VCs investing in companies and helping companies succeed. It didn't even exist. Wow. That's oh, so we got over there. Well, it must have been in maybe the 50s or 60s or something. That would have been relatively yeah. early. It's crazy. It was early. Yeah. Wow. So and this is a lovely person. It's great to get all of their perspectives on the show. Yeah. They seem like a really great family. I'm look, looking forward to getting to know them more, um, you know, through the show and, and how they view businesses and, and all the, I'm sure the family drama in between. But like, how did, how did it all happen? Like, did the Drapers, was this their idea for the show or did someone approach them and say, hey, this would be, you know, this would be a great idea. We should, we should put this together. So it was a combination of both. Um, I think having a show with crowdfunding had been brewing in Tim's mind. I heard that Tim would be, could be interested in a show like that. So essentially I put together just like any entrepreneur does a pitch deck and went and pitched him. I had my own idea for a crowdfunding show um, and said, you know, um, that's it. Let's just go do it. Let's go for it. And he made some changes to the initial idea and said, let's call it Meet the Drapers. And it came to fruition that <laughs> way. <laughs> so. That's great. Well, I was going to be, that was going to be my next question is, you know, how did you get involved as the produ producer director? But basically you just collaborated directly with Tim and, and it came to fruition. Yeah. I just went to him and said, Hey, let's do this. Yeah, I mean, you know. this is the type of show when I heard the concept for the show, immediately a light bulb went off in my head like, well, that, of course, makes sense. This this is the perfect type of show that should be here now, especially with crowdfunding. And it should be really popular because, you know, it, it, again, it, it, the power is with the people and, and people have the opportunity to get involved, whereas most of the time you're just kind of, you know, tuning in essentially, right? Yeah. And, you know, and people can decide now where our future goes all this time, the big companies and what where innovation was headed and technology was decided by a handful of venture capitalists. Now the people can make those decisions. Who are our next famous entrepreneurs? What do they look like? What are they doing? It doesn't have to be in the hands in the hands of just 10 VCs anymore, Yeah, I love which it. is very interesting. I love it. I, I know. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about the show. You know, what okay there's 13 episodes correct yes so 13 episodes how many total companies will be on the show on one of the episodes so there's three entrepreneurs per episode so that's 36 companies that are going to be featured in the season wow okay and yeah yeah go, go for it yeah. no, no no go i'd like to hear you talk a lot more than me <laughs> <laughs> no i i like to hear you talk more than me <laughs> well how many how many What's the application process like? What can we, ex if someone is interested in applying to be on, you know, to be one of these thirty-six companies, what you know, what's going to get them on the show? What type of products we're we talking? Consumer products, tech, you know, what stage of the business do they need to be in? Right. So essentially, um, we are looking for tech-related companies. We do have a few consumer products in there, but mostly tech. It is a Silicon Valley show, and so if they do have a consumer-facing product, it should be combined with tech like through an app or an e-commerce platform or something of, along those lines. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't just be an idea. Like I sat in my kitchen table and I was drinking coffee in the morning. And I'm like, oh, I have this idea. Let me go pitch it to the Meet the Draper show. Mm -hmm. There has to have been something beyond an idea. So it could be that your business plan is already developed. You have your team in place. You've built some level of traction. 
You don't have to have attraction yet if you have your, you've done your research, you figured out your product plan. There should be something that you've done to show that this is a valid company and that you're serious about taking it forward. And the criteria that we're really looking for is that it's mission driven, going to create some kind of impact in the world. Um, an out of the box entrepreneur we love, like women, um, people that are really just taking that going above and beyond to make it happen, and you wouldn't traditionally see them as your traditional entrepreneur. Um, that's not a necessarily a criteria, but we do like seeing that. So those companies tend to be selected. That there's a big enough market size that it can turn into a real business so that when our viewers are investing, they're actually investing in a real company that essentially could return money for them one day. Mm -hmm. We look at how, how are the competitors? Is there a real opportunity for this company to actually succeed and thrive? Or is it an oversaturated market? Is there something unique about them? And then essentially we talk to the entrepreneurs after we've gone through that process. And when we're on a call, I really, really look for the passion in their voice, how driven they are. Are they, is this an entrepreneur that if they need to pivot, they're going to make it happen no matter what, because they're so determined and they just have that extra edge. And that's something you just feel in someone's tone and how they're talking about their company. And essentially that's it. Then we select our entrepreneurs and they're ready to go. And of course they have to be open to crowdfunding. You know? <laughs> right. So, so I guess some that's odds. That's a, that's a big component yeah. of it, right? So if they're doing, if they're going to be on the show, they need to have a, is it going to be an open crowdfunding campaign with Republic or coming up or wh what stage of that does that need to be? So what's going to happen is we pre-record the episodes and then when, once we, because we go through an editing process mm -hmm. with the, with the entrepreneurs, we do a behind the scenes video and once it goes up live, that's when the Republic campaign comes up. So the day the episode airs, their Republic campaign goes live. And then on the show, they're enc encouraging the audience to invest in them. We are going to have ahead of time all of the entrepreneurs on our website promoting them so they can start to build out some raving fans and get some loyal customers that are ready to invest when the show goes live. So once the show goes live, then the on then the viewers have a week to invest in those entrepreneurs for that week at a special cap rate. After the week is over, they won't get as good of a deal. They can still invest, but they won't get that initial deal. And then the following week, we record live the results from the week before. And we're confident that all of these companies will get some level of investment because we've hand selected them. They're great companies. Um, and I think the viewers are going to be very excited about that. This is such a sick concept for a show. It really, it really, really is. Like, I mean, it's yeah. it's perfect timing in in terms of of crowdfunding, and you know, I hate to use the word Shark Tank as a, as a comparison, but I guess I always imagine that you know people tune into that and in many many millions and look on with total enthusiasm. And now this gives the opportunity that people can you know invest in these companies themselves, sitting next to their TV with their laptop next to them. Uh, and they can uh, essentially also follow behind the Drapers, correct? Yeah, they can follow. Well, so we're not going to reveal who the Drapers invested in Ooh. until the last episode because we want to give a fair chance to all the entrepreneurs. And to be honest, they may not invest in a company that could still be a great company. So we want the viewers to decide. It has to be fair to the entrepreneurs. Wow. Um, otherwise, they're just going to follow the Drapers. Wow. So the, <laughs> That's kind of fun, too. <laughs> yeah. So in the last episode, they can essentially see, oh, did they pick the companies that the Drapers also invested in? But, you know, they'll get a good idea anyway by the kinds of questions uh. the Drapers are asking, by their reaction. I mean, the viewers will get a sense of who the Drapers like. So, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So will the Drapers yes. investment go through the Republic campaign as well, or would that be separate or on top of how will that work? That's going to be its own investment, a regular VC investment. So okay. the company is going to go through their diligence um, just like they would when they're, when any VC is investing in them. But will the Drapers now be making the decision on or during the episode? It just won't be revealed or do they have time to, see what the uptake of other investors are and then make a decision later on if they want to invest. So the Drapers, it won't be revealed to the last episode and it takes time for 
venture capital to make investments. Mm -hmm. So they've already started talking with some of the entrepreneurs and they're already going through their diligence process. So um, as we get more and more entrepreneurs and they're pitching them and they like them, and then we're going to, but you know, I'll be honest with you, the viewers, when they're watching, they'll know. You yeah. can tell who the Drapers like and who they don't know. If you're smart enough, you'll figure it out. Cool. <laughs> so, oh, this is fun. This is yeah. fun. I'm getting excited for it already. Okay, so what can we expect from the judges? On on every episode, we'll, we're going to have three of the Drapers, and then we're also going to have a guest judge? Yep, one guest judge. It's a surprise guest judge. We have people of the likes of Vivek Ranadev. Um, I don't, he just... Um, sold Tipco for something like $8 billion, and now he owns the Sacramento Kings. Um, we have Jyoti Bunsell, who just sold um, App Dynamics for $3.4 billion, and he um, is now looking to find just three months ago, so he's now looking for places to put his money, so we thought he'd be the perfect judge. <laughs> we, always, <laughs> we always like those type of people. Yeah, $3.4 billion, I don't know what to do with it. I mean, he has a chunk of that, right? So, And then... Um, and Anjula, we have Anjula Acharya, who's mm -hmm. a partner at Trinity Ventures and Priyanka Chopra's manager, a guy by the name of Naveen Jain, who's um, currently, he's another billionaire entrepreneur who's going to the moon. And so we have some really good, we have a great lineup of guest judges, more to come as well. Wait, he's, and, he's actually going to the moon? Yeah, he has a company that's landing on the moon. So oh my gosh. private company. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy now that we're in like this day and age when saying he's going to the moon actually means he's going to the moon, not just means like he's yeah. taking a he's taking a big swing or something. I know. <laughs> crazy. Well, that's awesome. I mean, that's 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 really exciting. So, what can we expect from the three Jerrypers on the show? Are they are they collaborating on uh, on questions and and or on investments? How, how do they interact on the show together? You know, um, their interaction is actually the best part of the whole show. Because it's, it's really a family, like how you would be with your dad and your grandfather. And so they all ask their individual questions. Oftentimes, so Bill has his own set of questions. Tim has his own. Jesse has her own. Sometimes they don't agree with each other. Sometimes they agree with one another. It's very casual. Um, they ask the kinds of questions you would expect to get in a, in, in a VC meeting, essentially. Like your inspiration, your team the market size, as well as, you know, where do you think you're headed? What are the next steps? And sometimes they make the entrepreneurs dance and do a money dance. Some right. they do fun nice. things. They do fun things. Yeah. Cool. So. so just one last comparison to Shark Tank. It seems like there are, there are some comparisons and some things that are certainly going to be different. You know, what can the, the, the viewer expect in terms of the format of each episode? The only similarity between Shark Tank and Meet the Drapers is that entrepreneurs are pitching to judges. Aside from that, it's a very different show. So it opens up with a conversation, like a casual, fun conversation between the Drapers about that topic of the week. The topic could be artificial intelligence, it could be fashion, it could be VR, and they have their vantage point and they discuss it amongst themselves. It could be women entrepreneurs. And then the entrepreneurs that week correlate with that week's topic. So essentially, a guest judge comes out, they do a short interview with the guest judge to get his perspective on the topic, and then the entrepreneurs come out. After every entrepreneur, you hear the Draper's commentary and what they thought about that particular entrepreneur. In the end, we get some fun words of wisdom. Again, the show is, like Shark Tank is very serious. This show is funny. Mm -hmm. Like they're constantly joking with one another. They're joking with the entrepreneurs. They're laughing. And you're getting tidbits of the re of real Silicon Valley, like how do venture capitalists think? So uh, that, it, it's different. It has a very different feel than Shark Tank. Cool. Thank you for explaining that. It's a great comparison. And uh, speaking of words of wisdom, I've just tuned in. I know I'm late to the ball on this, but I've just been tuning in to Billions, the show. It's uh, I think it's on Netflix. I'm totally uh -huh. addicted. And I'll tell you what, I learn something new on that show every single time I watch it. I love it and recommend it to everybody. The Billions show? Yeah. Okay, so what's What's your latest? What's your latest? What are your words of wisdom for oh, your viewers? Oh, that's it's late, and I just had a dinner party and a bottle of wine, so probably shouldn't probably shouldn't rely on mine too much. But uh, but I'm certainly looking forward to learning from Meet the Drapers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so much. Yeah, you learn so much. It's fun. I mean, even for myself, just sitting there listening to um, 
all of these entrepreneurs pitch when we're on set and hearing their their commentary in the background, you just learn so much. And I go back and look at my days as an entrepreneur when I was pitching VCs, and I'm like, oh, that's the mistake I made. Mm-hmm. That's what I did wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I, I mean, and it's great as yeah. as a producer that you have that experience as an entrepreneur as well. And I know a lot of entrepreneurs out there, they're going to be looking forward to listening to this and also learning how to pitch better and learning to understand a lot of what VCs and, and even angel investors look for uh, and what they can expect when they go into pitch. Absolutely. You know, that's the main thing. And I think, you know, that's what makes this show a little bit different from the other pitch shows out there. It feels very real. Like you're just really listening in. Like you, you've got some seat inside of a room in, in the Draper's family room and you're, you're eavesdropping on their conversation and you're hearing what, how they think and what they're saying and how they even talk with each other. And it's fun. You'll love the show. That's awesome. So how much yes. of an investment are the, like, is there a budget that the Drapers are saying, all right, we're setting aside X for the entire season or the, all the episodes, or are they maybe looking at making certain size investments per company? Is there any type of range that you could clue us into? Yeah. So they haven't decided that yet. They haven't even revealed that to me. They're they're because they've never seen these entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. So their thing is, you know what, we're going to keep it organic And if we're going to invest like we would really invest, they are going to invest in some of these entrepreneurs, but it's going to be real. It's not fake. Like, oh, we have this money and we have to give it to someone. And this is how much we're going to give. This is what we think this company is worth. This is what we would typically invest in. This is exactly what we're doing. And that'll be revealed at the end of the season. The main purpose of this show is really to put the power in the hands of the people. So crowdfunding is what we're encouraging more than anything else. So we don't want people to just wait and see what who the uh, Drapers are investing in. Because, you know, sometimes these entrepreneurs, I'll be honest with you, they're fantastic. And they get on and they're pitching the Drapers and they completely mess up. You know, they completely, they're nervous. Yeah. And that happens in real life, too. You know, and they just like their pitch goes in some other direction. They don't even say the right things. And then afterwards, when you talk to them behind the scenes, they're like, oh, my gosh, this is what I really should have said. This is what I wanted to say. I was just so nervous. And that happens to the best of us. And you just totally blew that meeting. So now the viewers can say, hey, look, but I still think that's a good entrepreneur Mm -hmm. who's going to succeed. Just had one bad meeting, you know, and that's how it is in real life. So. Yeah, and I think I think VCs understand that there's, you know, certain people are very good at presenting and very good at talking the talk, and some people are more behind the scenes people. They're very organized. They know how to structure things. But if you ask them five questions on the spot, they might stumble over the words. But doesn't mean they're necessarily a bad entrepreneur. They just they're just a different personality type and just operate differently. Exactly. That's exactly it. So that's for the viewers to decide. So we want to take the focus off of who are the Drapers investing in and onto. Who are you going to invest in? Who do you think our next entrepreneurs are going to be? And then, hey, you may have invested in a company that the Drapers invested in, and that, that was your good luck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, awesome. You know. And then the, yes. way, the way the Drapers – so the, the main uh, – we'll say the crowd investment is all going to operate through Republic. So people can log on to Republic during the episode. They're going to see – that company, what they're raising, and they'll be able to to participate in that if they're uh, if they're part of the Republic platform. And then for the Drapers bit, that's going to be separate VC money. So I, I guess it will just assume that they're negotiating their own their own deal and their own terms with the entrepreneur outside of that. And if it works, it works. They invest, and if not, then they don't. But there's there's not necessarily a range of money. It could be a little bit, or it could be potentially millions of dollars that they're investing in these companies. Exactly. And of the 36, I can tell you that a couple of these are going to get a good investment from what I can see. What is a good investment? Come on. (laughs) You know, I can, uh, yeah, I can't guarantee or predict, but you know, some of these look very interesting to the Drapers and I think they're going to get a healthy VC round. Um, Some will probably get some angel money out Mm -hmm. of the Drapers. You have to remember we're looking at three different funds here too. Jesse has her own fund. Bill Bill has his own fund, and Tim has his own fund. So let's well, see this how is, this they, is. Don't, they don't do it as a family. No. <laughs> oh, that's we even don't. better. That's cool. That's good. You know, they have their own personalities. They have their own you know, their their yeah. own perspective on investments, and now they have their own fund. So it's really cool. Yeah, and they're independent. 
do. They don't want to. They don't want to be a part of the other person's fun. Yeah, it's <laughs> like know? it's like inner family rivalry a bit. Yeah, so let's see how it all plays out. It's going to be interesting because the thing that I love about this show is it's real. There's nothing scripted here. If they're going to invest in a company, it's because they really want to invest in that company. So, you know, then the viewers are really going to get a chance to see what really happens in the Valley. Mm, awesome. And for for all the viewers that are anticipating and, and potentially participating in the investments through Republic, what – like? Is there a, a definite set structure of the investments? We had Chuck on uh, a while back. He's one of the, the partners of, of Republic. It seemed like they were doing all these um, – it was basically a convertible note that they called SAFE, S-A-F-E. Is that going to be the, the form and structure of the investments for this episode as well? Yes, it is. So it's, it's exactly how Republic does it. It's a convertible note. They are going to have, depending on the company and the valuation that they've determined for themselves and the amount they're raising, dep- depending on that, you will enter into a deal with that company. So all that information will be visible on the website when you go to invest, including the company financials and anything that you need to know about the company to make a sound and safe investment. And for our viewers, I mean, the diligence has been done on these companies. They have to go through a certain process, which is pretty rigorous, for them to even be approved on Republic. So they know their investment is safe. Now, will the investment return? There's no guarantee there, but they know it's safe and companies that we think are good companies. I think that's really well said the way you said it. Safe, returns, not guaranteed, of course. But in terms yes. of the due diligence, the paperwork, the underwriting, all that stuff. And that, I think, is is such a huge issue, especially international. Um, and some of the companies I've invested in is is just getting your head around all that paperwork and having that kind of uh, that middle ground and that platform of, of due diligence is, is especially important. Yeah, absolutely. So that's done. So the viewers don't have to do anything but pick a company, put in their money, and they can invest as little as $10 if they want to. You know, if that's what makes it fun. So yeah. whatever they feel like investing, they can invest or more, obviously more, the better for them because they'll have more equity. Right. But Cool. So, so yeah. we got to hear from you, you know, what's, what's an inside, well, you know, what's an inside look at a, a day in your life as the producer? Um, you know, we always picture, you know, movie sets and cut, take, you know, do this over. Like, what is it like on a TV show like this? Oh boy. So it's, um, there is a lot of cut and take, you know, and that's the fun part. Uh, so when we're shooting, so there's the regular days and there's the shoot days. So on a regular day, like today, for example, when we're not shooting, I'm, um, my day is broken up into several different components. As a producer, you're responsible for many things. One is, um, the distribution of the show to make sure that's intact. So keeping up that relationship with Sony, I'm constantly talking to them, making sure that, you know, are we are we going moving ahead in the scheduling or our promo is going to be scheduled on time? Is, is the distribution locked in? What kind of a date do we have? Do we have prime time? Do we have non-prime? What's our launch date? Are we launching at the right time? So just keeping that relationship going. So distribution is one component of my day. The second component of my day would be the sponsors for the show. So as a producer, you're responsible for um, the money aspect of this show. So who's going to sponsor the program? Who are good sponsors? We don't want sponsors that just will low, it will tarnish the brand name of Meet the Drapers. So managing that whole process. It's also the production team and the budgeting behind it, the scheduling behind the entire production the editing process, because I'm also working with the editors on our promos, our show, our behind the scenes. And then another huge component is the entrepreneurs mm. um, managing their whole entire process from beginning to end. Luckily, I have Republic to work with. Otherwise, it would be a very big process. Right. <laughs> but, um, you know, making sure that, you know, the entrepreneurs are that it's all well organized, that we're shooting their behind the scenes videos, that they're ready to go, that they, that they're good for pitching on TV, that they're camera ready, their releases are signed. So essentially, you know, then there's the marketing of the show. So we're also responsible for that, you know, working as producers essentially do everything. You have to think of it as the CEO of a TV show of a company, but it's Mm -hmm. really you're in charge of everything. 
And so is marketing um, up to par? Is our social media running? What's our PR strategy? What's our marketing strategy? Um, what's our budget for all of that? You know, um, when do we release it? With the marketing behind the show, there's the marketing behind the drapers, the guest judges, and the entrepreneurs. So that's what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. My, I, I usually divide up my day into these components and focus on each one so nothing gets missed. Like right now, I'm focused on distribution. Right now, I'm focused on marketing. Right now, it's editing. Right now, it's production. Right now, it's entrepreneurs. And then repeat. On the day of shoots, it's so much fun. That's what I live for because <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's the hustle bustle. I'm one of those people that loves to be really busy. And so like the entrepreneurs are coming in, you're organizing everything. The team is in place, you know, it's lights, camera action. That's my favorite part. So <laughs> are you shouting at the drapers and telling them to keep their chins up and point their fingers more? Yeah, uh, yeah. Sometimes, like you've got to <laughs> take that. You know, um, the redo it this way. We forgot this line, this sentence. The story is not coming out. But overall, they're real easy to work with. These guys are natural on camera. Wow. So, Lots yeah, of especially fun. Jesse. The show. Yeah. It's cool to hear, you know, your your kind of journey from entrepreneur into producer, and you can of course hear the entrepreneur and you coming out talking about the production and and all the responsibilities. So that's that's actually a really cool story. I'm glad we got to touch on that. And where um, where's the filming for all this happening? Uh, you have 36 entrepreneurs that you need to film. Are they all coming to see you somewhere? Yeah, we have a studio set up in Draper University. We converted one of Tim's buildings into a studio, and. Um, it's in San Mateo, California. They come on in and um, we are going to be shooting behind the scenes videos of all the entrepreneurs on location of where they're at. If they're not in lo based locally, then we're giving them guidelines on what they need to send us. Cool. And is, uh, there, is there still opportunity for companies to apply and potentially get on the show? Oh, yeah. We have a next round coming up. So we're shooting again at the end of September, and we're currently accepting applications for that now as we speak. Oh, boy. Sounds like a lot of fun. Well, hopefully, hopefully we can send a few applicants our way, and um, we'll throw them a bone if they mention Invest Like a Boss. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love the name of your show, by the way, Invest well, Like thanks. a Boss. We only have bosses on this show, so consider yourself a big boss. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So a couple, like couple, a couple of uh, questions just in closing. Where and when will this be airing? And you know, who are you in, in collaboration with? I think it's Sony. And any any idea on you know anticipated viewers? Yeah, so it, it's going to air in October. We're still waiting for the exact launch date on Sony Entertainment Television. The call sign for that is S E T. Mm -hmm. It's a channel owned by Sony. It's a Prime channel which comes on Dish. Comcast, um, it's on your Roku box, and it caters to the South Asian demographics. Remember I told you Bill was one of the first VCs in India? Mm -hmm. So he has a special place for this demographic in his heart. So he wanted to start there as far as a prime channel. And um, there's going to be 3 million, it's going to be distributed to 3 million viewers in the U United States. Mm. And then the season is going to then be repeated internationally around the world. So, but for crowdfunding purposes, it's a U.S. based show in the beginning. Um, it is going to be streamed online as well. So they have to keep following our website and social channels to figure out when that will happen. Okay. So yeah, that's going to be my next question because I'm in Asia right now. I bounce around Hong Kong, Singapore, Bangkok. So I was wondering how can I, you know, how can I? Just me. I just want to watch. How can I? So it's yeah, streaming, you'll, right? You'll get a chance to see it online. No, yeah. I'm looking forward to it very, very much. So as a producer, you know, what is the most exciting thing about, you know, working on this? Of course, you pitched it. Now you're producing it and in, in the middle of filming. And it's, it's pretty cool that you're actually finishing the filming, it sounds like, in September and it airs in October. I thought there'd be a much longer lag between, uh, oh, between yeah. the two. Yeah. Yeah. So the most exciting thing for me really is to watch these entrepreneurs pitch the drapers because for them, it's such a 
big opportunity and when they're backstage and they can't wait and they're nervous and you know they go on to pitch them and then they come back off and you know they're how they felt and their anticipation behind the whole thing and you know they just feel like it, it's some of these for some of these entrepreneurs they couldn't have imagined that they would get a chance to pitch the drapers and then that too promote their product to millions of people so the look on their faces their anticipation you know like to me that makes it worth it every single moment because you feel like you're helping them along their journey do, do you feel like you ever feel like you just want to reach out and be like give them a tool tip, just <laughs> give them a little consult on the side. Maybe you should, you know, prop up this aspect of your business a little more, push that a little bit more. But I'm sure you like you get an affection for some of these entrepreneurs and while they're pitching, you just want to step out and lend them a hand. But that's, uh, that's all part of the show. Yeah, yeah, I know you do. Or like, oh, I do say that you should have said this instead. Or, you know. <laughs> I know what the draper is like, you should have said this. I know because you get to know them along the way and you really start to you start to root for these entrepreneurs yeah. and you want to succeed, you know. Very cool. Well, Sharika, thank you so much for coming on and sharing this with us. It's uh, obviously a, a very highly anticipated uh, show that you guys have coming up. I'm very much personally looking forward to streaming it live from Asia. Uh, but thanks for taking time in your morning to come on the show and and uh, share this with us. It's it's very exciting stuff, a new type of episode for us, and something we're looking forward to sharing with our our listeners. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This has been a lot of fun. You betcha. Great luck on the show. All the best, uh, and I know it's going to be a big success. Thank you, thank you, and good luck to you too with your podcast, which sounds amazing. Man, that was exciting, Sam. I'm, I'm really, really stoked. I, I can't wait to see the show. Me too, man. Glad we got them on. This is going to be, this is cool. This is an awesome episode. I learned a lot just getting to know an inside look of what a show like that would be like. And I think it's really interesting how the entire family of the three generations are going to be there pitching. Like, I just kind of picture it with my grandma, my dad, and myself up there. <laughs> like how we would view businesses and the questions we would ask it would be it would be hysterical and they seem like they're a great family and have a lot of a lot of banter and kind of camaraderie so i think it's i think it's going to be a like i said in the intro i think it's going to be a home run yeah I, I definitely think so and even before that i think just like the fact that she could just broke down exactly how it worked how she pitched tim uh, to create the show mm. how the back end of it works i mean it really is like running a company I, I I never thought of a TV show like a separate business, separate company, but that really is what what it, what it is. Yeah, and when you see Sarika's title, producer and director, you assume that she just came from a film background. You assume that she went to school and uh, in, all through high school is probably involved in TV production of some sort. But it turns out she's an entrepreneur. She's obviously got production skills and talents, but you know she went and basically pitched the show and made it happen. Uh, and now she's working with Republic.co and the Drapers to put this together. I think it's it's a really cool – it's inspiring to see it happen from a, as an entrepreneur. And I'm looking forward to seeing these companies pitch. And I, I also like the twist that they're doing where they're not going to disclose which companies the Drapers are going to be investing in that you kind of have to read them. Uh, if that's something that you're interested in, if you're interested in, in investing in companies that they're investing in, you have to try to make a read on them. I think that adds a great twist to the show. Yeah, definitely. I do like that in the, in every, like the next episode, they show what everyone actually invested in. I guess we could just look at it live, mm -hmm. but I think that'd be mm -hmm. kind of cool as a recap. Um, that's the only thing that I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out the format because I think part of sh the reason why we like Shark Tank so much is we like to kind of guess, um, if they're going to invest or not. And then we get mm -hmm. that instant gratification of seeing it. But maybe this way, I, I understand why they're doing it this way. And I think this is, uh, a way for us to really challenge our own investing skills. Absolutely. Now, Johnny, a while back, you invested in a company called BeatStars through Beatstars. equity crowdfunding, and and they are killing it. Like I, I haven't looked at a lot of the other companies that have gone through crowdfunding, uh, equity crowdfunding. They're, I know. Uh, I talked to Abe, the CEO of the company you invested in. They're killing it. Um, and I know that was that was a company you thought was cool, but you were just doing it kind of, you know, it was almost play money that you're you're testing out and wanted to see how it all worked. So now that that seems like that will hopefully be successful for you and hopefully you'll make a return. And now that you bring in this new element where 
you, you kind of gamify this a little bit. It's it's much more interactive when you can watch a show like this and be able to to see the pitch and invest real time. Do you think this is something you'll you'll try to participate in again? Oh, definitely. I, I'm ex- I'm excited <laughs> for this because. I mean, yeah. first off, I had no doubt that Beastars was going to do well. I, I, I think I'm the home run hitter when it comes to investing. <laughs> yeah, boy. So <laughs> Johnny the VC. <laughs> maybe we can we can start challenging, have a little friendly yeah. uh, friendly wagers. See, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, that's a good idea. Too. Yeah. yeah, that's fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, I I'm really happy that we live in the time because I mean, literally, this podcast would not exist. Five years ago, shows like this would not exist five years ago, and the ability for people to invest i think as what did she say as as low as a thousand dollars or even less than that it's it's amazing that we can now participate in the upside of these investments and instead of us you know I, I think the difference between watching something like Meet the Drapers and what I think you mentioned the uh, home shopping network is instead of us wasting money buying. Uh, just, you know, crap that isn't worth anything. We're buying, even by liabilities that's going to end up costing us more money down the road. We're buying assets now. We're actually buying investments. And I think that's exciting. I agree. And I think right now that a lot of people are not really interested in investing in startups. They just see it as too risky or it's too difficult. I know from firsthand experience, investing directly as an angel investor, it gets super, super complicated, lots of paperwork. But I think the direction this is going complements to equity crowdfunding is it's getting a lot a lot more simple. So right now, if you want to invest in in small cap or, or, or small companies, you typically invest in like the Russell 2000. But I think it, at some point in the relatively near future, a balanced portfolio will have uh, an allocation towards proper startups. And the the more advanced this gets and the more deal flow that these that these platforms like Republic uh, and Indiegogo and some of the other platforms are getting, the and the easier it makes it to invest, you know, in in a few years people could easily have 5% of their investment portfolio allocated to companies through these types of platforms. So I think it's really cool and I think this show Meet the Drapers if it gets large enough and enough enough uh, publicity this could put it on a whole nother level because this could really this can really bring a lot of spotlight to equity crowdfunding. Yeah, I, I think it's really cool, and I think it's cool that we're able to watch it online and stream it. Um, I think you know it's nice that they have it on cable TV, but I think really the future is just be able to get this in as many people's hands as possible, especially live, so people can participate you know that week and just be excited about it. Uh, so, so I think it's amazing that we live in a time now where we can invest in equity crowdfunding that all of us can be uh, little mini VCs, you know, whether mm-hmm. it's yeah. uh, with Republic.co who we had on uh, on episode 40 or uh, with Indiegogo, uh, which we had on episode 32 where I invested with BeatStars. I never mm-hmm. thought that it, I would be able to be a venture capitalist, especially not having a million dollars to put into a round, not having those connections, not knowing how to create these contracts you know, not having, you know, uh, just the the inside, you know, scoop with the Silicon Valley scene. Yeah, I think what would be really cool in the future is let's say you invest in 10 companies through these platforms. If you could have some type of almost like a performance tracker, right? Like if you one of the great things investing in an index fund is, you know, where it is or any stock or for that matter, is you know exactly where it is in a split second. You turn on your iPhone, you look at your finance chart, you know exactly where the price is. One of the difficult things with startups are you, you never really know the valuation. It's all speculative or it's all kind of assumed. Okay, I invested at a three million valuation and now they think it's a five million valuation. They raised money on this valuation, but it's never it, it never is until you have a cash offer for money in the bank or an IPO, right? But if they can come up with some way to kind of tr- give a little bit more of a uh, tracking uh, of this stuff and monitoring the performance of this stuff, I think that's kind of next level stuff because it's it's hard to do right now with startups. But if you can get some type of a visual, it would make investing, like you said, kind of equating this to your own little mini VC fund, it would make it really cool and, and I think a lot more mainstream. Yeah, I like it a lot. And this is, you know, it's just exciting. You know, like I don't think investing in, you know, startups uh, or investing in kind of these, you know, high high risk, high reward type 
um, investments would ever be more than, let's say, 5 to 10% of my total net worth. But it's probably going to be the most exciting 5 or 10% of my net worth with the highest potential to you know really striking it big. Yeah. And I think there's another really cool side of this that is not for the investor, but for the entrepreneur. Whereas now as an entrepreneur, you have the ability to take your business and pitch it to the crowd, right? Like if, if you're not in Silicon Valley and you're not in New York, London, and you happen to be in Kansas or you happen to be in Chiang Mai, Thailand or wherever you are, you can, you have the ability to pitch the crowd through these platforms. Uh, you know, historically you have to be in kind of one of these, these startup hubs like, like Silicon Valley to be able to get access to be able to pitch VCs and angel investors to raise money. But now you can go bootstrap your company in a cheap destination, run it low cost, and you can pitch the crowd. You don't have to pitch a VC. So I think now is also a fantastic, you know, becoming an entrepreneur is easier and easier. Building a business is easier and easier, more competition, but never been easier to get started. And now it's never been easier to pitch and raise money for your company. I like it. And actually, for all of you who either have a company right now, uh, have a startup, or if you're thinking about creating one, I mean, the platform's there. Um, she, yeah. you know, she gave us exactly what she, what they're looking for for the next round of people to be on Meet the Japers. Mm-hmm. There's a, a link on republic.co slash meet dash the dash drapers which we'll have in the show mm-hmm. notes to apply to be on the show for, for next year. And I, I guarantee that if if you get on the show, you're going to get some type of funding. Yeah, I, and I would really encourage people to do that. If they are if they have a startup, they're interested in this. I took a look at the application process. It's literally two minutes. Um, it can't hurt. Apply. Let them know that you heard about it on Invest Like a Boss. See if you get a phone call. See if you get an interview and potentially get on the show. It's It would be a super cool experience. And man, I would love to hear about it if you get on. So keep us posted. I love it. Yeah, let's definitely have another follow up on this after it's officially out. Uh, maybe we'll have um, a thread in the boss lounge to discuss the show, uh, especially every week as it comes out. And if we personally are going to invest in it or not, I think I think there's just tons of fun things. Yeah, absolutely. So awesome for Surika for coming on and sharing that. I know there's not a, a ton out about Meet the Drapers right now, so it's somewhat of an exclusive. And there's going to be a lot more coming out, promo videos. And we'll keep all the people updated in the Boss Lounge and in our show notes with new material that they put out. Very cool. And shout out to Bill Draper, Tim Draper, and Jesse Draper. If any of you three ever want to come to the show, you always have an invite. Absolutely. And also a big shout out to the people that have left reviews over the last, I'd say, last three weeks. So we had an anonymous donor that offered to donate in the name of anyone who left a review. So we have... 10 people that we're going to give a quick shout out to. Uh, Johnny, I'll, I'll read them off. Yeah, sure. Here we go. So E9133, Trader CC, Rufus, uh, Bryce SD. I think that's Bryce from San Diego. Uh, Vincent 808, Kwong, ICD in 2012. Here are the codes. JT Jones 91, Johnny Turnell, and Giovanna Lucha. $10 has been donated to the playgrounds that Johnny and I will be putting up in Cambodia next year. So thank you guys for your review and thanks again for the donor for contributing the $10 in their names. Yes. So super, super cool. Thank you. Uh, we can't use the name of the donor, but he is a member of the Boss Lounge. So if you want to join mm-hmm. our Facebook group, you can thank him there. Uh, big thank you to everyone else who's uh, left a review. And also, thank you to FreshBooks, our sponsor. Uh, the next time you guys need any type of cloud accounting software, uh, or if you want to be able to collect your <laughs> invoices as they do, go to freshbooks.com slash invest. And in the how you heard about us section, make sure you say the Invest Like a Boss podcast. See all of you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Best Like a Boss podcast. Join our mailing list at investlikeaboss.com to get exclusive access to our insider investment portfolios and our private members forum. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. Tell your friends and leave us a review in the iTunes store. It helps more than you know. See you guys next week.